I would like to acknowledge that this video is being filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to their elders past and present, and extend that respect to any Aboriginal, Torres Strait Islander or First Nations people who may be watching this video today. Good morning friends. It is Saturday the 19th of February. This is the start of another reading vlog and this is going to be my bonkers romance podcast extra book book club book reading vlog for the next two days I don't know what to call this I'll figure something out I have been to Pilates this morning that was at eight o'clock I've just been to the post office to post some things I had to post some tax documents off and also I had a package to send to Brie so that is finally on the way I've been meaning to send that for ages and I just have not had time it is currently very warm and sunny outside you can see the brightness in the background and I've got to have the air conditioner on because it's so stuffy in here. This week has been absolutely insane. I'll probably fill you in a little bit later on once I have time to slow down. I don't know which books I'm going to be reading. I think I'm going to have to read King of Battle and Blood or whatever that New Scarlet St. Clair title is because that one's just hanging over my head. And it was sent to me through the podcast by Annette Galley, so I needed to do that. I also have some reviews to write for other books and I've got some filming to do today. So that's what we're going to do. I also have to tidy up a little bit. My parents are coming over to drop Benny off later today. So he should make an appearance in this vlog. I don't know if he'll turn up in the other videos this week, but he'll be here for part of the day while they're out. And I'm kind of annoyed because earlier this week I was vacuuming my apartment and my vacuum cleaner died in the middle of vacuuming my apartment. Now my apartment is tiny. It overheated massively and then wouldn't turn back on. It does currently turn back on, but I have decided that I'm going to part ways with this vacuum cleaner. Last night I bought myself a new one. That's going to probably take about a week and a bit to get here. So I'm going to have to uh, sort out my life in the meantime, which includes, ironically, buying a new broom because my other broom is outside and full of cobwebs because I use it out on the balcony and I don't want to bring that inside. So today is just like a total mess and I've talked a mile a minute. So hi, <laughs> this week, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this. So. I am going to be filming my weekly wrap up and also my book haul for February as well as this vlog. So this will probably go up on Tuesday and the reading call or the book haul will go up on Friday. I don't know guys. This is start of the year teacher brain and it's a lot. All right, so I think the video cut off, but I was just putting on my, was it natural mineral cover? powder foundation which I haven't used powder foundation for ages but I got this at Christmas time in a like a little gift pack and it's been a savior with the hot weather so we're just keeping on keeping on with all of that and I am not someone who spends forever on my makeup anymore I used to and then I just don't have time anymore so I for my brows I use this what is it W7 Super Brows Pencil. I actually have like four brand new ones of these sitting in my thing because I always just buy a couple when I go to the chemist and I got one for Christmas. They're like $4, so super cheap. And weirdly enough, I always get compliments on my eyebrows out and about. And I'm like, it is the cheapest eyebrow pencil you could find anywhere and just works. And then the mascara is actually one I've just opened. It's the Rimmel One Deluxe Volume. Um, my mum actually got this for me for Christmas. Every Christmas she throws things like eyebrow pencils and mascara in the stockings. So she just picked one, which is totally fine because I'll use whatever I've got. And it's a bit of a learning curve, but I think I'm starting to get it. Although, oh no, I didn't smudge it too badly. Yeah. Uh, I just finished my previous one. So I really loved L'Oreal's Miss Munger. I still haven't thrown this one out. Uh, I don't know if they still make it anymore. Anyway, I had one lying around, so I just kept using them until I finished them. No, nope, not that. My hair is currently a hot mess. All the time. Okay, so the camera keeps cutting off because uh, the battery is dying, which I'll charge it after this. Anyway. Pretty much that's it for how I get ready most days and for videos because I'm not very adventurous. I'm going to add my Ana Luisa jewellery. So I forget which necklace this is. If I can find it I'll pop it linked down below. But it's like a gorgeous moon one. Let's see if I can manage to 
actually clip it on. Not bad. All right, I'll catch you after I finish charging this video, this camera. So it is now just after 1.30 p.m. I haven't read anything because why would I have read anything in this reading vlog yet? I have filmed two videos. I've done the laundry, I've done the dishes. Um, my parents are coming to drop Benny off in the next sort of 30 minutes or so. I'm currently just finishing off listening to the latest Bonkers Romance podcast episode, which, you know, is fitting. And they're talking about the Mabon Feast by Sam Nascosto, which I've read and loved, which is like a spider centaur man type story. It's no, In fact, it's a novella. It's, only, it's less than 100 pages long and it is delightful. But I think I'm going to try and edit the books beside my bed video. Then I'm going to read for a bit when Benny's here. And then I think after that, I will edit the book haul video so that they can all be scheduled. So because what I'm doing now is uploading them unlisted and then releasing them a little bit earlier for members. So usually 24 hours beforehand um, is the general go. Although if you remember and you want it to be earlier, if I have them earlier, I can always actually make them available once they're uploaded. Sometimes they're uploaded four or five days in advance just because I like to get all my editing done this weekend. But I'm going to try and get as much of that edited as I can now. And then I'm going to figure out which books I'm going to read. Look who's here. Good boy. Also, my uh, parents dropped off a parcel that I had delivered to their place because some of the Amazon parcels I have delivered to their place, just depending on when they get sent. So check out the size of this parcel. How many books do you think are inside this box? Here is the book, The Very Far North by Dan Burrell. This was a book that was recommended as a good chapter book for younger readers or something that younger readers could read with an adult. Um, so I've got a couple of things that I want to try and um, this one sounded interesting and I, I kind of liked the idea of it. So I don't know whether it'll be appropriate to read with my class as a ongoing chapter novel on top of all the picture books we read, but I thought I'd give it a shot. So I have like, 10 minutes of editing left. Benny is very annoyed that I uh, can't give him all of the attention right this second. But soon we will have cuddles. Very soon, Benny. Yeah, thought that might be what you say. Sorry about the computer running in the background. It's uploading my video, but what I have is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett Sinclair, The Forbidden Man and The Nordic King by Karina Halley, Repeat by Kylie Scott, Earthbound by Emma Barry, The Immortal by Gina Showalter, Dating Dr. Dill, and I know there's one that I'm missing, The Astronaut and the Star, I think, which I actually would like to read this weekend, I think. I am going to try and knock out King of Battle and Blood because that one's like hanging around my neck and I'll either, just, I'll either read it or I won't read it. Or I'll do an effort, so I think I should probably try that one first. We have made it to the couch. So Benny and I are just chilling here on the couch, like, literally just here. And I am nearly 60% of the way through King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett Sinclair, which is a vampire fantasy story. And basically you have Isolde who is princess of a kingdom and one of the neighboring kingdoms is a kingdom full of vampires. and. Adrian, who is the king of that kingdom, has come to hers either for war or, as it turns out, when he comes in, he says that he will protect Isolde's kingdom if Isolde marries him. And, you know, the first half of the book is literally them getting from that point to a very quick marriage and then traveling back to his kingdom. And now that they're here, she's just started to get to know some of the people of the court. And she's had this dream about Adrian and he was much younger and I'm just starting to go, is this a reincarnation, reborn thing? I don't know. We shall see. Like, it's entertaining. It'll probably be like a three and a half star 
read for me. For the start is very, very dramatic, but like leaning towards melodramatic rather than, you know, blow my socks off dramatic. So I don't know. We shall see. Hi guys. So it's now it's about 7.30 p.m. Benny has gone home. My parents came and collected him after they watched my cousin play soccer. Apparently, it turns out it was a, you know, very important tournament. His team did lose, but, um, you know, my parents said they played pretty well and um, my cousin did really well, which is exciting. So Benny has gone home. I ended up getting Nando's for dinner because I couldn't be bothered cooking anything. And I have edited my February book haul. So I'll upload that a little bit later tonight. And I just finished King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett Sinclair, which was very dramatic in the way of fantasy romance. Yeah, it's one of those things like I there are so many elements that I should love, but I just find the overly dramatic nature of fantasy and the complex world building and extra stuff going on in the background to not 100% be my thing. So there's actually nothing wrong with the book. Like the book itself is perfectly fine and people who like fantasy romance will probably love it. It's just not my preferred genre. So, you know, take that as you will. Uh, yes, my prediction was correct and everything was rather dramatic towards the end. I just, I find it interesting, some of the some of the decisions of some of the characters. So Isold was basically, you know, had to take this arranged marriage in order to save her people. And she did it because it would save her people. And yet her father and her father's head of the guard, who was apparently in love with her, you know, they're all saying, you have, like, you can't do this, blah, blah, blah. You'll have to kill this guy, etc., etc. And they didn't trust her. And then when you get to the end, there's a couple of things that happened that really annoyed me with her father. And it's like, well, you didn't try and fold, find an alternative. You let her go off and get married. Don't be surprised when she turns around and falls in love with this guy that, you know, was your enemy. But she married him, for goodness sake. What did you think was going to happen? Anyway, we're just going to we're going to leave it there. I think what I'm going to read now is Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma, which was another um, early release copy that we received. And I think I just need to read a contemporary. This is why I read so few fantasy books anymore. I need big breathers in between them. So I'm 60% of the way into Dating Dr. Dill. And I'm going to tell you why I stopped to just pick up the camera and at this particular point, because I was just going to wait till the end. But it is, I think I said it's by Nisha Sharma, and it is about Karina, who is 30, and her younger sister is getting married, and her father and her grandmother are all over her, and so are the aunties, about getting married, and about her being the older sister who is not married or engaged before her younger sister gets married. Anyway, she's out at a bar one night, and she sees this guy across the room, and they have this really great moment and his name is Prem and then he gets a call and just ghosts her and then the next day she's with her sister who is filming a segment on a talk show with a talk show doctor and it turns out that it is Prem and she absolutely blows up at him it goes viral and the two have this image issue because Karina believes in true love and Prem doesn't really believe in that at all he thinks that relationships can survive on something other than a love match. We find out Karina's father is planning on selling the family home which Karina wanted to buy but no one's talking to her about it and she doesn't have the funds to buy it and her father refuses to give her the money that was set aside for her wedding unless she gets married and Prem is trying to start up a clinic for Southeast Asians in New Jersey and he needs money but he's lost some of the capital because of the fallout from the social media thing with Karina. It's proposed that they fake date and a fake engagement and up to this point they're still Karina is still fighting against this they've had one incredibly one night to get it out of their system sort of night which totally worked in the reverse for Prem and there's so many different funny things that happen along the way because Karina is trying online dating and you know you get snippets of text message chats with the people that she blocks which is hilarious anyway she's just gotten off from a video chat with a truly obnoxious guy and she you know has resigned herself to a night of reading paranormal romance novels and you know perfect quote about werewolves and shifters knowing the true meaning of fated mates <laughs> romance reader you know we get it and then the very next page it says Karina was about a page and a half into the newest Nalini Singh book when her phone pinged with a new text message Karina is my new favorite person. Anyone who name drops Nalini Singh in a romance book automatically gets a tick of approval from me. So that was really fun. 
I think this comes out in March, so definitely check it out if you're interested in it. I forgot that it was, and you know, I totally slipped my, slipped my mind. It's a Taming of the Shrew retelling, and it was good. It was really good. Go read it when it comes out, because it's great. Hi guys, so it is Sunday. It is now nearly 11 a.m. And this morning I forgot to grab this camera. Oh my God, is this actually gonna focus? Oh, there we go. So I forgot to grab the camera first thing this morning. I did do a live stream where I was updating my reading journal because I'm very, very behind. I've also done laundry with the towels and I had a very exciting delivery turn up. I'm still very confused as to why things are turning up on Sundays. This copy of Electric Idol turned up today which was the one that I got from Katie's Patreon. So it's been signed and there is a not safe for work art print inside. But I was very excited that that turned up today. I didn't actually realize that I was getting that. So can't complain, um, but I'm just doing some laminating and then I'm gonna duck into work. So I'll actually take the camera with me and show you sort of the state of the classroom at the moment and try and get ahead of that. And then the rest of the day will be food prep and reading. Yeah, that's the morning update. All right, this is the current state of the classroom after three weeks at school. Just made this lanyard for my teaching partner and I because we have a new student who is really struggling with social cues. So particularly the word stop. Um, so we put a couple of cards on there and then this was from the same pack. There's actually a few more sheets of paper at home that have even more cards. But I just put on the ones like listening and waiting and sitting on the floor because that's what he really needs at the moment. Hopefully that will help. And there's a couple of us this year that have needed to use them. And I've never actually needed to use these before. So that shall be interesting. Okay, I think I am done. I have done all the copies. I have fixed up the planner. I have made that lanyard that I needed to make for one of my students. And I have set up the morning activities. We are doing fine motor rotations on Monday morning. So that's all done. So now I'm gonna pack up and go home. Hi guys, sorry for the window glare on my glasses, but I am about to start The Astronaut and the Star by Jane Comfort, which is a, I don't know if it's a debut release. Anyway, it's a contemporary story, I believe, about an astronaut and the actor she is training for a role that he's playing, but we shall um, see how it goes. I've sort of read mixed things, but I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so I'm about 50% of the way into The Astronaut and the Star. And this is not going to be a book for everyone, I can tell you that now. But that said, there are some things in it that I really like. So we have Reggie, who is an astronaut, and she is vying for a position to be the first woman on a moon habitat mission. Except she's very, very type A, very controlling. She basically screws up a training mission like literally calls it quits in it because the partner that she is assigned isn't doing the job the way that she would do it and she's just like she has to be the best that's the way that she's been raised now she's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way and to be fair most of the time she rubs me the wrong way but i also know that i'm that kind of personality and that I am the person who will just do a job over somebody else because it will be faster, easier and done better. It's a personality flaw. So I can't get too mad about this character because I know these people exist. And in fact, we actually need them to exist because they do excellent jobs in their field. But that doesn't always make it easier to read about them in a romance book. Anyway, so in order to sort of clean up her image and maybe convince NASA that she can be a team player and go on this mission, she's not really a team player, um, she offers to work with this actor who is going to be playing the lead in a space movie thing. And part of this involves living together for a month in a habitat, a training habitat in Arizona. So it's forced proximity. I'm pretty sure that the that he has ADHD, maybe? It hasn't explicitly explicitly been said on page, but there's something definitely going on with him in terms of neurodiversity I think that, but I think it's ADHD he's like a giant puppy dog his name is John he's a total sweetheart she has no filter and yet he just takes it all in stride and um, he's a sweetheart so but he's just literally read the script for the first time for this film that he signed on for he hadn't read it before and he's like well it's been told I was told it would be an Oscar winning contender and it's very avant-garde but 
you know, it's a pretty weird sort of script. But anyway, this check-in was just to say that my favorite, favorite thing in this book is a side character who called Katya, who is a Russian cosmonaut who just does not mince her words with Reggie. They're friends and roommates and they had been on the ISS together. And so anytime Reggie calls Katya for some sympathy, basically what she gets is some hard truths. <laughs> And I love it. All right, so I finished The Astronaut and the Star and I have to say that I enjoyed that a lot more in the second half of the book than I did the first half, which was great because I mean, I know I talked earlier about how I know exactly why the characters are the way they are. Like, I totally get it. It's not always what I like in my romance books, but that said, once we get to Reggie and John actually talking and getting to know one another, you know, both characters have to grow and learn a lot about themselves and in fact, John does figure out that he has ADHD, so he didn't know beforehand, but he begins to piece it together in this book. And I believe I read in the author's note that Jen Comfort herself has ADHD. So, you know, there is that level of authenticity of an adult finding out something about themselves that they didn't, hadn't clicked for them yet. So I really like that. It's a pretty fun read. There's a lot of little space facts and also a lot of liberty taken, which is totally fine. Like I've, I'm not a stickler for all that stuff because hey, I like to be entertained about space stuff. That's why I like sci-fi. It was an enjoyable read in the end. I'm glad that I read it. I'm now currently up to date on the most recent books from the Bonkers Romans podcast, which is nice, but I do need to catch up on the others. But for now, that's where this vlog is going to end. I will, I will, I will, I will, you know, have another vlog where I try and catch up on the other books at some point. So stay tuned for that. That is coming. But for now, this vlog is done. So thank you very much for hanging out with me this weekend. I'm going to go cook myself some dinner and hopefully have an early night tonight. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.